Do you need help? Yeah. Okay, go sit down. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Okay, so got everything set up here. Ready to do some more diamond painting. We're gonna finish off some questions today. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do in future streams, or I mean, what I'm gonna talk about, I guess, but I don't think I'll be streaming for a little bit with everything going on at the moment. But for now, uh, this is what we got. So, all right, everything's good. I think I got everything I need. Got my pen, got my tray, got my, Drills, got my wax just in case. All right. So, just gonna give it another minute here so that anybody who's gonna join is gonna come join. And my little disclaimer for the day everybody is home. So, you probably will hear a lot going on. The dogs are trotting around and, uh, the little one should be taking her nap, but I just checked on her a minute ago and she kind of was moving around. So it might take her another minute. As long as she stays up there and takes her nap, we're all good to go. But otherwise, hopefully my husband, I don't know if my husband's gonna jump on his video games. So hopefully we don't hear him yelling at his, at his teammates again. But um, yeah, so. Let's see. So today I'm going to try and finish up these little sections here and then all the black that I missed and the rest of this yellow section here. So hopefully we're up to all this sections will be done and then her hair or something will be next maybe. Um, although this might be the last day that I wait to do this. I'll probably start working on this more often um, in my free time. Sorry, these are out of place. They're driving me crazy. Um, just because I'm getting in, more in the mood to do my diamond painting, I just was trying to finish up some other things. I've recently been reading a lot, and I have a, a Goodreads. So I have a goal that I set myself, which was like 20 books to read for this year. Oops, let me not do that. I have 20 books that I set to read for the year and I'm on like, I'm almost done with book 18. So I was just wanting to try and hit that goal since I was so close to it. Um, so I've been reading a lot, but other than that, I've been watching a lot of Netflix and I finished up quite a few series that I had started. Um, so I've started, um, or I didn't start, but I finished up, what was it? Lucifer, I finished up, oh, I started and finished Sabrina and I finished The Good Place. And then I started Outlander and I just finished the first season of Outlander. So I've been sitting and doing my cross stitch while I binge watch pretty much. And that's been really relaxing. So Lucifer, super good. Um, definitely not what I expected when we first started watching it. So my husband and I watch um, TV when we eat dinner. And it was one of the times that he was putting something on. And I normally don't like it because he always puts on weird stuff. He'll put on something random and then we never finish watching it usually. But we ha he put it on and we both kind of got into it. And I really ended up liking it. So... They added a final season the other day. <laughs> Sorry, my husband's being weird. Um, yeah, they finally added the la uh, another season on Netflix. And so I binge watched that and I finished that one. 
And then once I finished that, I had Sabrina sitting there in front of me and I was like, okay, well, I'll see what this is about since everybody's been watching that. Yeah, I know. He told me to watch a lot of, a lot of people told me to watch a lot of things that I never, yeah, but, I told you to watch a lot of them when you them. but I didn't watch a lot of TV for the longest time. So I didn't get to finish anything that I've started. Like what straight, <laughs> get out of here. Go, go sit down. Um, like stranger things. I haven't finished that. What else? There's, there's a few other shows. Mandalorian, I gotta catch up on. I finished season one. I've seen season one. I just haven't watched season two. Um, me? I didn't do nothing to your headset. Kenna, the baby's awake. Can you put her in bed for me? You're supposed to be napping. Go with daddy. Did you? Go with daddy. Go with daddy. Go take a nap. You're tired. Go on. Come on. <laughs> My goodness. Go on. Go with Dad. Go with Dad. You're tired. Go on. Come on. Valeria. Go on. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I... I I've been in a mood to watch TV lately, pretty much. Go with Dad. Go with Daddy. Go on. Go on. Where's... Where's Bunny? Go get Bunny. And Titi. Go on. And, um... Yeah, so I started and finished Sabrina. I liked it. I see why people were saying it was a musical, but um, I think it was more of like a, I think it was more of like a, like you know when you watch a TV series and then they have certain episodes where it's like they have a giant scene going on and then they have music in the background. Well, instead of a, a soundtrack, it was like them singing. And it wasn't all the time. It was only sometimes. So uh, it was, I, I like musicals, so I didn't mind it. It was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, no, that was, that was pretty good. At the, after a point, it started becoming like, oh, okay, I know it's going to, they're going to get into this issue. She's going to solve the issue. So it kind of started becoming redundant a little bit, but the last bit was was pretty interesting how they wrapped everything up. So, finished that one. And then The Good Place, super funny. And I was, I loved it. I loved that last season because I know it's the last season. I think they discontinued. They canceled the, the show now. But she, no, it was, it was great and super funny. And then the last episode, it was just turned super sad. So, it was like, oh. It was just a super sad episode on the last episode. So, so I finished that one and now I'm into Outlander and that show is really good, but it is definitely very adult. It's a very adult show. Um, I'm surprised, you know, it's not something HBO made to be honest. Maybe they did. I don't know. I didn't pay attention, but it has a lot of trigger scenes and um, yeah, but the romance is pretty good. I like the romance in it and um, yeah, I like, I like the storyline. It seems like sometimes though, I feel like she just keeps getting into trouble and she keeps putting herself in situations to get in trouble pretty much. Um, but I guess, you know, they got to keep it going. So I just finished season one. So I'm on to season two and they're going to France. So I'm like, Ooh, that'll be really cool to see. Like all the costumes uh, right now. I really like all the costumes in the show. It's very, um, plain. Um, so like the dresses themselves, if I were to say example, to cosplay it, 
they would be very um, like plain uh, costumes. So they don't have like embellishments and filigree and stuff. So I think the way to make those costumes work would be to use like the right fabrics and stuff for it. But she, um, since they're going to France, I'm like, well, France is where all the fashion was at. So I'm excited to see like all the costumes in this next season. So that is what I've been doing. And uh, this will probably be my last live stream or video for the next couple weeks. We are supposed to have our um, walk through blue tape, they call it, for our new build tomorrow, which is why I'm going live today and not tomorrow. And obviously I wasn't gonna do it on Thursday or Friday because Christmas. Um, but the blue tape is tomorrow, so we're gonna go through and pretty much say what, here, what cosmetics things, I, okay. What cosmetics things, basically what we want fixed. Um, and then our closing date is the following Wednesday. So, Next week, it's all gonna be, I don't have anything for you, hun. I don't have anything for you. Go lay down, it's nap time. Go get your bunny and your blankie, go lay down. So the uh, following Wednesday is going to be our closing date and that's all packing and moving week. So I won't have any time next week. But that means hopefully on the, what is it, sixth? Is that the next following Wednesday? I think it is. I mean, depending how much I can get done um, by that day, because our household goods are all scheduled to be moved on the 4th. So we're gonna move into the house, hopefully on the 30th if everything goes correctly, and then we're gonna paint. There's some rooms we want to paint like my craft room, my craft room, I have a little design I wanna um, get into for my room. And so we're gonna paint, and then on the fourth, all of our stuff should show up, so we'll start unpacking. So maybe the sixth, I'll have something, I'm not sure. Um, so it might, like I said, it might be a couple weeks before I come back again. So I just wanted to update everyone and let you know that I didn't disappear. So you're not like, she's been so consistent these last month or two and now she disappeared. No, I just, we're finally getting into this house. It's been really stressful the last week. We actually should have had our closing date on Monday, but we had a third party inspector come and take a look at everything. And although he was impressed and it wasn't a super long list. It still had quite a bit of stuff that needed to be fixed. It was a lot of little things more than anything else. Um, so thankfully the builder, although it uh, postponed our closing date, they actually fixed out of, 50, out of a 50 page inspection report, they fixed about everything except for like 10 things. And a lot of them were, that's the how the plan of the build was. So that's what we did. So we can't change that basically. And we're like, okay. There was only one thing where we were like, uh, we we're really gonna be annoyed by that. Everything else is pretty small or it's not a big deal or it's something we can fix ourselves if we really want to. So we're, we're excited to go tomorrow and take a peek at everything that's been done and one more week to go. So we're ready to get out of this temporary house and start living our lives again. My husband and I said the other day, we're like, we don't have any value to our lives right now. <laughs> Just hang out and play video games and read and all that. So it'll be nice to get back to the grind and everything. So that's what's going on. 
But otherwise, I guess we'll get into the questions and hopefully I can finish up. I think I got about 50 more questions to go, 50, 55. And we'll finish that up. And then I'll have to think of something else to talk about next um, next time I do a live stream. Because I am not that interesting <laughs> to just... Uh, I mean, I can tell stories if someone's communicating back with me, like, you know, I'm having a conversation, like, okay, I can keep going, but when it's just me by myself, I'm like, um, sure, I'll try and come up with things in my mind. Oh, I did it again. I went too quick. I don't mind these little containers. I just don't like how they get stuck in here, and then they can make a mess if I'm not careful, but... They're not too bad. I mean, they were only $6, so can't complain for $6, right? All right, so we were on question 146, but on this page, I just noted, noticed all the questions at the right here are mixed up. So it's like 145, and then it goes back to 144, 145, and then continues down. So. Um, it's labeled as 144, but it should be 146. Um, but 144, are you an organ? Are you an organ donor? And how did you come to that decision? No, I am not an organ donor uh, at this time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, you hear those horror stories about organ donors, like if it, if you can't be saved, like they say they don't save you, kind of thing. Or not, not like that. I should say, if they didn't, what was it? How do I word it? Like they won't try as hard to save you. There you go, because of your organs. I'm sure that's not entirely true, but you know, you hear the horror stories. Um, but I haven't made that decision to do that at this time. Uh, I think I'm a pretty healthy person, but... Um, I mean, minus all the sugar I eat, which is probably my one super unhealthy thing that I do, is eat all that sugar. Um, but I don't know, maybe a future decision. You know how things change. Uh, 145, do you believe you should do one thing a day that scares you? could if you know you had a goal in mind on how you wanted to change something about yourself like how I said I used to be super shy so I put myself in positions that kind of made me out of my comfort zone because I didn't want to turn beet red <laughs> every time someone said my hair looked nice that I didn't know um, so maybe something like that but I mean, I don't think you need to do something extremely scary unless you're like an adrenaline junkie. Uh, 146, what if anything do you think happens after death? Ooh, that's a good question, especially since I've been binging shows all about death. <laughs> I didn't even realize that until yesterday and I was thinking about it and I was like, the last three shows before Outlander that I watched were all about hell basically um even the good place because that's that's what it's about um they were three different views of it which was pretty interesting um i think the one i believe more in is uh the the good places view of it toward the end, toward the last season, on how they have it working at the end. I think that's more of what I believe it's kind of like. Um, I, I wanna say it, but then, I don't know if I'm gonna, if that's like a spoiler alert. It's such a good show, so if you really wanna watch it, I want you to watch it, so I don't wanna be like spoiler alert, cause that was kind of like the big twist of the series. Um, but uh, what was the question? 
what I think happens. I think we all go somewhere and it's like a life review. And you, I think you have a chance. I, like your soul has a chance to redeem itself by retaking life again until you become, what was it? How do you put it? Like, oops, I have my book there. Um, before you come, like, your soul is, like, cleansed in a sense, I guess. Uh, just to say, like, you go straight, you know, to hell or something, and then you're, that's it. Like, you're done after, like, one life. Um, I don't know. It's a little harder to believe, even though I know that's the more, like, basic way of thinking about it. Um, I don't know. I just think it's too final for such a, a big, like, what do you call it? For such a big um, creation. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody really know? Probably not. But I do believe there's somewhere that we go afterward, at least. For sure we go somewhere. I don't think we just vanish out of existence. Um, see, every time I open these, I make a mess. All right, 146. What if anything, no, I just did that one. 147, what line should someone never cross with you? The, well, I, I went into that before, and that was the whole trust thing. Like, once you betray my trust, like, forgive and forget. Uh, 148, how do you define beauty? Oh, that's that's different to everybody. But since I'm answering the question, I don't know. Different things are beautiful. What is it? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 149. Do you believe in life on other planets? Definitely a yes. Because it always goes back to if, uh, how can we believe we're the only ones when the universe is so vast? It'd be pretty dumb to believe we're the only living organisms in existence because there's like billions and billions of galaxies i mean who knows if we you know you there's some people who are like oh well we haven't it's been how long now and we've never seen aliens but do we really know that and they do say we are also a very young planet as far as the galaxy is concerned so i mean maybe we're just new still we're still like the new kid <laughs> i don't know um but i definitely believe there is it, it just it just seems too dumb to think we're the only ones with all that space there's just so much space out there uh, 150, how do you interact with someone who disagrees with you? I guess it depends on the disagreement. I mean, most of the time these days it's about politics with everything going on. Um, which usually my husband and I really try not to talk about politics with friends. We'll talk with, about it with each other because we can trust each other not to hate each other <laughs> if we disagree. But with friends, you know, it's a little iffy. Usually we kind of know who has our same beliefs. Um, and then we know the friends that don't kind of thing. And uh, we just kind of keep to ourselves about it. Or we'll say a remark or here or there. But, or they might say something and we just kind of keep our mouths shut for the most part. Um so there's that kind of disagreeing that's been going on lately that I can think of. Otherwise, I I don't usually try to judge. I mean, I try not to judge people. So everybody's got their own opinion. Uh, 
So we all, I just try to learn, learn from people's viewpoints. And if it's something I just totally don't agree with, usually I'm not friends with that person. <laughs> Usually all my, all my friends or whatever are, are people I care about. And even if they're not, and I totally disagree with it, then it's not someone I concern myself with. I just, um, you know, oh, hey, nice to meet you. All right. You have a good, you have a good, uh, rest of your life kind of thing. It's not usually not someone I tend to spend time around. The one day I go on a stream and you don't want to take your nap. It's okay, baby. But you can go play, but you have to go sit and be quiet, okay? Go sit and play. A few more minutes and then you have to take a nap. 151. If you could do anything besides what you're doing now, what would you do? I would definitely... Did I finish this one? Hold on. Or I... Eris, leave her alone. She's fine. Um, if I was not doing the whole sewing thing, I'd probably go, I'd probably go back to the baking and the culinary. And I would do that. Okay, what am I doing next before I get distracted? Oh, did I totally miss this spot? I did, didn't I? <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Like, there's more over here on this side, too. Right? I was just doing these. And I missed the whole section. That's okay. But yeah, I would probably go back to doing culinary, baking. Um, right. Go on. Go play. I know it's a whale. Go play. Uh, 152. What do you regret not doing in the last year? I mean, it's 2020. What do we, I'm sure everyone has regrets <laughs> at this point that they didn't do and they should have before the year continued on. I'm sad we didn't get to go to Disney Paris. I'm sad we didn't go to the UK. I'm sad we still didn't get to go to Disneyland when we got back to the States. I'm sad we haven't been back home since we came back to the States. So, I mean, it is what it is. But hopefully, hopefully, you know, just a little bit longer. That vaccine, it's on its way. So we can only hope. Uh, 153, what's on your bucket list? Oh, my bucket list. Uh, well, definitely, like I said, visiting all the Disneylands all over the world. I've been to the Disney World. I've been to Disneyland in California. I've been to Tokyo Disney. And I've yeah, and then we were supposed to go to Disney Paris. So one day I hope to complete. I hope to complete uh, going to all of them, and then of course going to the UK. That's another big trip I want to do. I've always wanted to learn Finnish because that's what the Elven language was based off of, and I think the Elvish language is beautiful. So I've always wanted to learn Finnish. I have been to Finland. Um, and yeah, the way they talk, oh, it's like so romantic. I don't know what it is. Um, so I hope to one day learn Finnish and Japanese because we love Japan and we plan to go back a lot. So I'd love to learn Japanese. And I'd love to finally figure out how to speak Spanish. I know a lot, but not enough. Um, I practice here and there. I just have to keep up with it. Uh, what else? 
I mean, obviously be successful on YouTube, of yeah. course. And happily, happily make the videos I want to share with yeah. people. Sorry, I don't know if you guys can see me doing this side over here. Okay. There's just a couple there. Um, I guess I'll just finish this little section here because it's all this color. So it's a pretty good size bucket list, I guess. Uh, 154, if you had unlimited money, oh, the sun came out. If you had unlimited money to start your own business, what would it be? Uh, I answered this one before, and that would be to start my own, like, convention for crafting and, like, cosplay, specifically. Uh, 150, what number? 155, if you found out today was your last day on earth, what would you do? My last day on earth? I would definitely find something like a Mexican restaurant that has super good Mexican food. I'm oh, sorry if you guys hear the plane overhead. You're on an Air Force base, so. That plane is like a giant plane and it flies like uncomfortably low. <laughs> so it's always super loud when it goes by. Um, but we are moving about 20 minutes. So we probably won't be hearing it much longer. That loud anyways. Um, yeah, I'd probably find like a Mexican food restaurant and binge food on Mex binge on Mexican food. I don't know, do the, do the, the quality time with the family, like last minute quality time. Uh, 156, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Japan. <laughs> Definitely Japan or California. I would definitely go back to California. I just, that's home. That's home for me. It's expensive, but I haven't found a place that I'm as committed to yet. We really liked Washington when we lived in Washington. So if we had to live there, I wouldn't be mad about it. I wouldn't be mad about it. But California is my home. Uh, 157, a genie gives you three wishes. What are they? Oh, that's a tough question. Whatever wish I would give, though, it would be, it, I would seriously think about it for, like, ever because I would be very specific to get specifically what I want. Because, you know, you say, I wish to fall in love, and then it would have you fall in love with, like, a cow or something stupid, you know, <laughs> as an example. Um... So I would want, I would have to think about it and be super, sus I, it would take more time thinking of how to be very specific about my wish. Um, 
live forever. It sounds all well and good, but then, I don't know. I don't think I would. It's too much sadness. And then you'd have to like disappear before people realize you're getting, you're not getting older. And, um, you'll see all your friends die. And then you can't make any friends. So probably not. Uh, 158. Which famous person in history would you want to spend the day with? Ooh, probably Marie Antoinette, so I can see all her <laughs> fashion dresses and stuff. She had such gorgeous, gorgeous dresses. They were stunning. Yeah, I'd probably spend the day with her. I just got a couple of these over here. Oops, I pressed it. Um, right? I have the right color. Yeah, um, it's because I'm looking at this upside down, so it's tripping me out. I just got a couple of these that I missed over here. Uh, 150, oh, see, it's tripping up on the numbers again. 157, if you could travel, if you could time travel, when and where would you go? Same thing as the last one. I go meet Marie Antoinette and see how she lived her luxurious life before she bankrupted the country and <laughs> and got executed. Uh, 158, do you think you'll likely accomplish all of your dreams? I mean, yeah, I don't think I have a super far out dream. Yeah, I don't think, um, I'm too far away from it. It's possible. Sorry, I'm looking for another color. This one? That's very... This looks like a brownish yellow and this is like a neon green. But it's it's the right symbol. Uh, 159, if you could magically become famous, would you want to? magically become famous sure I guess I know I mean I guess doing what I'm doing become famous sure I would definitely do it um, but for like something else I don't know about that I know it's like a double-edged sword because then you never have privacy and all this but if I had all that money for crafts, <laughs> to do more crafts, I think that's every crafter's dream. Uh, 160, if you could relive one moment in your life, which would it be? Mm, probably my early 20s. No, my, my mid to late 20s. That was a better time because I had the best time in those years. I wasn't stupid anymore. I mean, sure, I still did dumb things here and there, but, you know, I was finally seeing things like, okay, I don't rule the world. I made good money. I enjoyed going out with all my girlfriends. I still had a body that listened <laughs> and did what I wanted it to. And that was about the time I met my husband. So I would say my mid to late 20s. I would totally relive that. Uh, I think we got all those done. So we're moving into unconventional questions. 161, if you see a puddle on the ground, do you walk around it or over it? I usually jump over them if they're small enough for me to jump over. But if they're super huge, I'll walk around. 
162, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh, superpower. Oh, right here, right here. Right here. To control time, maybe? That way I can slow down time or like speed time up if I wanted to. I think that'd be pretty cool, especially with like all these like slow taking, um, slow process projects. If I could have all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, I think controlling time would be a good one. 163, if you could go back to, wait, we just did that one. Back to any time in history, where would you go? Was this yes, yeah, we did that essentially. Oh, One sixty-four. Yeah. If you came back in your next life as an animal, what animal would you be? An animal. I think the smartest choice would be a bird, because then you can fly, right? Flying would be pretty cool. Probably some type of bird. Maybe a crane or a stork or something. Oh, oh. 165, if you got to name a new country, how would you decide what to call it? I'd probably name it after a video game knowing the names we've come up with for our girls. They're both named after video games, so I'd probably name it something after a video game. Uh, 166, what would be the title of your memoir? Oh, that's a hard one. The title of my memoir. I don't know, probably something like slow and steady wins the race or something. <laughs> Thank you. Why? Because I always see the bigger goal and I know you got to work toward it. So I guess that's probably something I would do. Oh, there he goes. He's on his video games. Oh, bro, you guys left me. All right, I think I'm done. Yeah, I won't get into that area yet. Move on. Look, I missed one. Oh, I hate it when that happens. They like hide. I'm sure if you diamond paint, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. They like hide from you, and you think you have them all, and then like five minutes later, you see like 10 that you missed. Yes, Olivia. I don't have any. I'm sorry. Here you go. Um. This color. 167. Do you hit the snooze button or wake up immediately? I wake up immediately. My husband hits the snooze button and it drives me insane. Insane. He hits it like 10 times sometimes. I'm like, really? Why? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Go on. Go play. Go take a nap. Go lay down. Yeah, he drives me crazy. That thing will go off and then he'll stop it and then like 20 minutes later it goes off again. I don't know, I, I, I can't like, maybe I might hit it once like a snooze button because I'm like, okay, well I have either five minutes to get ready or I have 20 minutes to get ready. And sometimes I'm like, I can do it in five if I'm super tired, but most of the time, I just set one alarm and it, I'll wake up. But with him, oh, it's like alarm after alarm after alarm. I feel like that would make me more tired to like wake up and then fall back asleep continuously. I don't know. One sixty-eight. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Well, I get up. No. Go take a nap. Go take a nap. Go on. Or go play. Um, 
first thing I do in the morning, obviously use the restroom. And then I gotta get the girls up. I gotta feed them breakfast. Then I let the dogs out. Then I feed the fish. Then I feed the dogs. <laughs> And then usually five days a week, I work out in the morning, so I'll make my pre-workout, and then I'll sit down at the computer and check out my stuff, my emails, my Facebook, blah, blah. I'll drink my pre-workout, and then usually I do my workout about an hour later. So that's usually my morning, most days. I feel like if I don't work out, I feel sluggish the rest of the day. I don't have anything, Olivia. Here, there's crackers there. Bring me the crackers, I'll open them for you. Uh, 169, what's the last thing you do at night? Turn all the lights off, lock all the doors. <laughs> um, you have to ask, you have to ask daddy, babe. Um, I may go on my phone for a minute, for a minute or two just to see if there's anything going on. But if I'm reading, like lately I've been reading my book, I'll read a chapter or two before I go to sleep. 170, do you believe in any conspiracy theories? No judgment. I mean, I guess aliens is a conspiracy theory, right? And... What else? All the... How the... Military is making uh, a, uh, <laughs> sorry. Go take a nap. Go take a nap. She's fighting it today. I'm telling you, like the one day is the one day she didn't want to take her nap. She's usually very good at it. She's usually not the one I have to worry about. Um, but yeah, the other one probably like how the military uh, knows about aliens and they have alien crafts and stuff. I bet it's true. <laughs> Trust me, I ask my husband all the time, but <laughs> he doesn't know. And if he does, he doesn't tell me. Um, oh, trust me, I'm like, are you sure? Is What's at Area 51? He's like, I don't know, I've never been there. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um... 171, do you think iced coffee should only be consumed in the summer or all year round? Well, I don't drink coffee, so I can't put my two cents toward that. Uh, 172, would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? I'd rather be covered in fur. I think that'd be so much softer. And that would mean that I'm somewhere cold and I like cold places more than hot places. 173, what's your idea of a perfect date? Yes, of the calendar year. I wanna say it's saying like from Miss Congeniality where she's like, what was it, April something. <laughs> Which, by the way, is one of my favorite movies. And my husband found out real fast that uh, I watched it a lot. <laughs> um, my favorite date of the calendar year? Uh, something in October. Any day in October is a day for me. Uh, where are we? 174, what's the most unusual place you've fallen asleep? Oh man, did I fall asleep? Nothing too crazy. I wasn't like someone who fell asleep in class. 
Um, I don't know, not, nothing crazy. At work, when I worked at Panera, when I worked graveyard, like sometimes I would sleep in the booth during my break because it was closed, so no one was in there. And if I stayed up all day to, and then went to work and worked all night, like then sometimes I'd be super exhausted. So I would finish what I need to do and then I'd go take my break or my lunch and then I'd go take a nap in the booth. I think that's as unusual as it gets. 175, at a party, where can someone find you? Probably dancing or where the food is at or where the games are going on. So like if there's like board games or there's like someone playing something outside or video games, that's usually where you'll find me. 176, do you wash your legs in the shower? I mean, yeah. <laughs> that makes me wonder if that's not a common thing. <laughs> 177, who would play you in the movie of your life? I don't know. At one point in time, people would have probably said Mandy Moore. I don't like Mandy Moore. At this point in time, I'm not sure. Bro, I hit the helicopter. But definitely Mandy Moore was one way back when. Um, 178, when making a PB&J sandwich, do you put on the peanut butter or jelly first? I put the peanut butter first. first. And it's because it's easier to clean off the peanut butter to me than the jelly. Or, no, no, no. So you do the peanut butter. And then that way, if you stick the knife into the jelly, the jelly goes in the fridge after you open it. So to me, the peanut butter would be fine going in the fridge compared to putting jelly in your peanut butter <laughs> and leaving the peanut butter out. <laughs> That's my way of thinking about it anyways. Because I don't think jelly, I mean, jelly could go bad, right? If it's not in the fridge. So thus you would get sick or not feel so good after that peanut butter and jelly after a bit. So I think I would definitely do the, continue to always do the peanut butter first. Uh, uh, 179, do you have any allergies? Not that I'm aware of. Although one time I did have strep throat back in high school and I went to the doctor and they gave me medication I forget what it is now, but it was an antibiotic and I couldn't take, I don't take pills. I choked on a, one of those hard candy lifesavers when I was really young to where I, I had two and they were stuck together and I couldn't break them apart. So I just shoved it all in my mouth and I laughed about something like two seconds later and it went down my throat, but the way it got lodged in my throat was the hole was up. So I was still somewhat able to breathe, but for a good like minute, I was literally choking on it. So after that, like when I think about taking pills, like I can't, my throat will literally close up. Um, I'm getting a little better, but I have to basically, if I take like Tylenol or something, I have to chew it. I have to chew it at least a little bit to break it up into little pieces or I can't do it. Um, so, Anyways, that was I don't I didn't usually take medication at the time is what I'm trying to say. And so I took they gave me some pill. It was an anti whatever I said. Uh, I forget the name. Um it was an anti um I there I go again. You I said it earlier, but um they gave me quite a few. And so at the time, my, my boyfriend at the time was trying to help me. He's like, well, let's get a milkshake from Jack in the Box and then just open the capsule and pour it in there and just drink it. And I was like, okay. So I drank like half of it. And then the next day, 
my eye swelled up and it was like pussy and disgusting and yeah, but that next day, even though my eye swelled up for like a day or two, my strep throat was gone. It was gone in like that, that same day it was done. So I am allergic to something, but I don't necessarily know what. But I haven't uh, had that reaction at all after that. So I don't know what, exactly what it was and I don't remember what the medication was. So I guess I'm thankful that, you know, I'm not, there's not a lot I am. Cause I know there's some people who are allergic to like 50 things. I can't imagine living life like that. How stressful that could be. Uh, 180, do you trust your own memory? Why or why not? Well, I did. I used to trust my memory real good. Um, but these days, I don't know. Like some things I'm like, huh? Like, no, I don't remember that. It happened yesterday. I don't remember. <laughs> um, when I first met my husband, he had the best memory. The best memory. He would remember things like, I would forget and I was really good at remembering things and then one day it just I don't know he he forgets everything now everything he forgets um, so I still do pretty well at remembering things but I know it's starting to to get to a point where it's like did that happen <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, where are we? 181, which fictional character do you relate to most? Fictional character. Fictional character. Hmm. I don't know, there's so many. Probably someone in one of those romantic comedies. At least my old self was. Oh, here I go again. I don't know. I can't think of anyone specifically at the moment. 182. What if anything would make you walk out in the middle of a movie? I want to say there was only one movie that I was so bored of that I didn't watch. But it wasn't in a movie theater. It was just, oh, why did I put it back? It wasn't even in a movie theater. It was just at home. I don't remember what movie it was. But usually I'm good at finishing movies. Even if I don't care for them, I'll usually finish it. Um... But I, I like so much though too. What? Did you put it back to sleep or did she go down? She went up by herself. Yeah. She closed the door. Now. I know, I see her. I can see the doors closed. Yeah. Hopefully she goes and takes a nap though. Yeah. She, she is? Yeah. Oh yeah, she was tired. Yeah, she went by herself. <laughs> My uh, 22 month old just put herself to a nap. <laughs> I'm telling you, she's usually really good at taking her naps. Today, she just wanted to fight it, I guess. Maybe she's growing. Um, yeah, but in a movie theater, I don't know if there's something that would particularly make me walk out on, because usually I know what I'm watching. Um, yeah, probably not, especially if I spent money on it. I know you can ask for like a refund. But like I said, I wouldn't watch something that I didn't already know what it was about. And if I didn't, it's because my husband wanted to watch it and I'd be there watching it because he wants to watch it. Uh, 183, when was the last time you cried and why? Oh gosh, I cry all the time. <laughs> I'm so emotional. Uh, I did cry watching Outlander, though. Was it Outlander? No, I was cried because I was watching The Good Place. 
on that last, uh, that last episode got me. It got me real good. Yeah, that was probably the last time recently. And that was only a couple days ago. Uh, 184, what's your most controversial opinion about something mundane? Controversial opinion. Maybe the peanut butter and jelly thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think maybe the peanut butter and jelly thing is probably a good example. 185, do you stan any celebrities? Oh. Where I'm super in love with them. Um... Who do I like? I don't even... Well, I mean, I like... I love... You know what? I love uh, Chris Pratt. Definitely Chris Pratt. He's just, he's good looking. He's funny. He does action movies and like sitcoms. Um, I think he's pretty versatile. For the things that I like anyways. What I like in TVs and TV and movies. So I'm going to go with Chris Pratt. Uh, 168, what's your go-to midnight snack? Sweets. Just last night I had, um, I bought one of those containers of chocolate that you pop in the microwave and melt, and I had strawberries. So I dipped them in chocolate, and I just sat there eating chocolate-dipped strawberries <laughs> before bed. They were so good though. I'm about to go to Walmart after this, so I'm gonna pick up some more strawberries and some more chocolate. Um, 1, oh, go-to midnight snack? Oh yeah, no, it's something sweet for sure. 187, what was your all-time favorite Halloween costume? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, so my mom had this friend that she made a costume for, and it was uh, Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind, and it was her curtain dress. And my mom made it, and it was so pretty. She did such a good job on that dress. And the, the girl she made it for had the shoes, like, had found some shoes to go with it perfectly. So I had a costume contest at school. I believe I was in sixth grade and I won the costume contest with that dress but I love that dress I'm telling you I should have known like costuming was my thing like a long time ago um, but that was my favorite I wish I had a picture of it I don't I don't think my mom does either I'll have to ask her but I don't know yeah that was that was probably my favorite costume and unfortunately, it wasn't even mine. <laughs> so maybe one day I'll make one. I don't know what pattern she used. My mom has like a million patterns too. And uh, that, like I said, I was in sixth grade. So that's a very old pattern. So I'm sure it's discontinued now. But if, if I could see what it was, um, I'm sure I could find something similar at least. Uh, 188, what's the weirdest thing you do when you're alone? <laughs> what's the weirdest thing I do alone? Um, I mess with my feet a lot. My feet have been super dry, so I'm always like messing with them and like trimming my toenails. That might be kind of weird, I guess. I think it's kind of weird sometimes. Like, I can't help myself sometimes, and I just, socks will, like, come off five seconds later, and I'm, like, messing with my feet. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say I talk to myself a little bit, but I don't think that that's that unusual. I think a lot of people talk to themselves. Uh, 189, do you have any recurring dreams? I do. I can't think of them right now, but I'm always dreaming. I dream all the time. Some of them are more vivid than others. Um, 
but I'm always dreaming. And I usually remember a lot of them for a time or something will remind me and I'll remember them. Um, but I know I have a few where I'm like, I dreamt this before and it's happening again. Like a deja vu in a dream, but I know I dreamed it. Um, I can't think of one right now though. 190, what's the silliest argument you've ever been in? Oh gosh, something I probably argue with with my husband. Over something dumb. Oh, I, <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what's the stupidest argument we have. Okay, I bet you he's gonna hear me talk about this right now. He, um, so he thinks that Funfetti is a flavor, but it's not. I think it's a type of cake. <laughs> and he's like, no. He's like, so what is it? It's bits. I was like, well, Funfetti is sprinkles in vanilla cake. So it's a type of cake or a type of, of thing. And he's like, no. He's like, it's a flavor because now they have funfetti flavored oreos and funfetti flavored um frosting and i'm like no i'm like it's just a type it's a type of thing it's not a flavor i was like they're because sprinkles don't taste like anything they're just little bits of sugar and he's like so you're saying sugar isn't a flavor and i'm like no sugar is not a flavor and he's like so i don't know we we get into it we get into it, but definitely I believe it's just a type of cake and he's saying it's a flavor. Um, but definitely the silliest thing we argue about and he has to bring it up every time. We could not be talking about it and one day he'll bring it up in front of friends and he'll be like, what do you guys think? <laughs> uh... What's the worst argument you've ever been in? Oh man. Probably something with friends that, um, yeah, there was a falling out with a friend and how things went down and they disagreed with what I did and I disagreed with what they did. And at this point we're not friends anymore, but I know that's one of them that I'm thinking of. Uh, 192, what's your opinion on modern art? Modern art. Uh, I'm not really into that kind of art. I like a lot of, I mean, it goes with anything. I like a lot of fantasy stuff and um, things that are super colorful. Um, But that very like modern, like abstract, eh, it's usually not for me. 193, if you could choose how to die, would you? If so, what would you choose? I don't think I would choose. The only thing I would want is as long as it's quick. Like it's fast and quick and it's done. Like I didn't even feel it kind of thing. Like. One minute I was there and one minute I wasn't. <laughs> uh, I think that would probably be the only thing I would hope for. I mean, of course I'd want to live till I'm old though. So, I mean, you know, people say like they go in their sleep. So maybe something like that, like I'm dreaming. And I, um, or I think I'm dreaming. Uh, 194, what's the most ridiculous outfit you've ever worn? <sighs> ridiculous outfit. I used to be a tomboy back when I was in like around fourth, fifth grade. So I always wore this super oversized shirt that my mom got me as a souvenir from, I don't even remember. It just had a giant falcon on it. I remember that. It was some state she went to visit, but I forget which one. And she brought it back and I would wear it, but it was super oversized on me. And then I wore jeans with it usually. 
but my favorite pair of jeans was like a bell bottom jean. <laughs> and I don't know if I have any pictures of it anymore, but that was probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever worn. Uh, 195. What was the first thing you wanted to be when you grew up? A teacher. So I guess in reality, I'm, out, I'm living out that dream because <laughs> I do tutorials on my channel. And I was a trainer when I worked at Panera for like eight years. So I guess I, in the end, I ended up becoming some sort of teacher. Uh, 196, if you could own a mythical creature, unicorn, phoenix, etc., which one would you pick? Oh, that's so hard. A dragon. What am I saying that's hard? I would choose a dragon. I've always loved dragons. I've always loved dragons. English dragons, though. Not a Chinese or anything like that. I've always loved English dragons. English style dragons. Um, but yeah, I would definitely have a dragon. My, uh, well, I guess I'll tell it after. I'm almost done with these questions. Let me finish the questions. Um, 197, what's your least favorite place yeah. in the world? Least favorite place. Hmm. The dentist. <laughs> I hate the dentist. I hate it. I've always had nightmares about the dentist. And I've never been until I got pregnant with my first. She's four now. And when I got pregnant, all the calcium in my teeth pretty much went to crap. And my teeth, I had my first like ever like tooth ache from a cavity. So I had to go in. It was so bad that I had a headache from the pain. And so I had to go. And since then, I've been keeping up with my teeth until we went to Germany, and then I stopped. So that's been three years ago now. Um, I do need to go back because I still need to get a crown on one of my teeth and um, a few more cavities to fill. And uh, but that place scares me so bad. I've had nightmares. That's what I'm. There you go. That's a recurring dream. I would always have nightmares about my teeth pretty much falling apart inside my mouth and then I would be spitting out like just tons and tons of pieces of my teeth. And then it would just keep going for like a long time and then when it finally stopped, I would have no teeth and then I would be thinking in my head like, what would so-and-so think if they saw me without my teeth? That was like one of my biggest reoccurring nightmares. So I've never liked the dentist. The dentist I went to in Washington, they were really nice. They definitely took care of me. They knew I had my phobia of it, my fear of it, but um, do I still want to go back? No, <laughs> but I need to. I really do. I need to go soon. And my daughter has cavities and she, I think she just has them. I don't think it was because of what she's eating. I think it's just because um, she doesn't eat too many sweets um, and she drinks a ton of milk. So I think it's just you know, it just happened, but she needs to go too. Um, 198, would you rather have your dishes or clothes be magically clean? The dishes. I hate doing the dishes. I hate them so much. That was like my chore growing up. Like the one thing I was assigned to like for sure that I had to always do was the dishes. <sighs> it's so gross with all the food and, oh gosh. I hate dishes. I hate washing them, I hate um, drying them. And I grew up without a dishwasher, so it was always by hand. Now that I have a dishwasher, it doesn't help. I feel like I'm still washing off the dishes to put them in the dishwasher. So it's, I, I hate dishes. I hate it with a passion. Uh, 199, what's your favorite story about yourself? Oh my goodness, favorite story about myself? Hmm. Uh, 
I don't know. You probably have to ask my husband that. A favorite story about myself. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Maybe my ghost stories. <laughs> yeah, I would say my ghost stories are probably my favorite stories about myself. That like little bit of, what the heck just happened? Like, is it me? Am I tripping out? Or did that really happen? Uh, 200. If you could change anything about yourself, would you? If so, what and why? Probably the sugar addiction. As much as I love sugar, you know it's not good for me. And now that I'm getting older, it'd probably be best. Um, but anything else, I'm happy the way I am. I mean, I'm happy with myself, so I don't think I would change anything. Um... What time is it? We've got about a few more minutes here. So I guess, what was I going to go into? I was going to explain something. Oh, about the dragons. So I'll tell that story and then I'll tell my ghost story. Um, so when I was growing up, I always knew I wanted tattoos. And my mom was very against tattoos. But we would go to the fair. So when I was younger, as I've said before, my mom was a dancer. She taught flamenco and flocorico. So I was always around it since I was born, basically. And so I ended up dancing with her. And every year we would go to the LA County Fair and we would perform there um, at some point in time. And after we'd perform, then we'd get to go around the fair and my mom would give me $5 every year to spend on whatever I wanted. Um, and every year, I would go and get a henna tattoo of a dragon on my hand. And it would somehow like wrap around my finger kind of thing. Every year. It never failed. So I always knew my first tattoo. I told her one day, I was like, my first tattoo is going to be a dragon. And she's like, you're not getting a tattoo. And I was like, oh, okay, mom, whatever you say. <laughs> so I don't know how she didn't pick up on it, on me getting that every time. I don't know how she didn't, she didn't know that's what was coming. And um, so, yeah, so that was my first tattoo. It's my dragon on my back. And at the time I was hiding it from her. So I had it. I got it on my back to where it's high enough that if my shirt went up, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, but yeah, that was my first tattoo. I've always loved dragons though. I've had plenty of figurines and I have quite a few figurines. They're in a box so Maybe I'll bring them out when we finally move into this new house since we'll have a little more space to like decorate. I'll finally bring out all my dragon figurines. Um, I don't know where I put them. Maybe in our game room because we're going to have a little game room in our formal dining room area because it's like a little tiny room in the front of the house. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. But we're going to make that our, oops, we're going to make that our game room. So we're going to put our dining table in there since we already have a bar in our kitchen built in. Um, we're gonna put the dining table in there and then we're gonna put all our board games in there. So that's gonna be our game room. So I think I'll put them all in there. And then that'll be with all the one piece stuff that you've seen in my other video backgrounds. It'll have all my one piece stuff, my one piece figurines and pictures, um, all our figurines that you saw in the background. Um, we'll put all that in there. Cause we're always trying to show people, show them off to people and then they're always in a back room. So it'll be nice to have them like up front in front of the house where everyone can see them. Um, but going into my ghost story, I guess my favorite ghost story is I, when I worked at Panera and I worked graveyard, I uh, usually work with one other person. So it was like, 
I don't know, 10 p.m. And we get our fresh dough, our the dough for the breads. It's made fresh every night, but it comes from our fresh dough facility. So the doughs themselves at Panera are not made in cafe. They're made at a facility, like a warehouse, and then they're shipped out every night the night before so that they're ready to go the next day where we take the dough and then we finish it and top it and bake it and whatnot. So it is fresh every day. Their bread is very good. All their stuff is really good. Um, anyway, so I was working with someone else and she was doing the main bake at the time. So I was kind of like the helper. And I finished everything I needed to do quite early because it was a very no, no. small bake that day. So I was like, I'm really tired, like oh, I was yeah. saying. And I was like, I'm gonna go take a nap. So I took my break, I went on my lunch. Still out there. Yeah, and I went and laid down in the booth. And at that moment, when I went to go lay down, that's when the, the fresh dough facility came to drop off the bread for the night. And so they're delivering, and I guess that's when I passed out. But I didn't think I was fully asleep because then I heard something, someone walking around my booth that I was sleeping in. And they were walking one way and then they'd shuffle back the other way. And then they'd shuffle in front again and then shuffle back. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like partially awake. So I'm like, who is that? Is that the delivery guy? Like, what is he doing? And then I was like, maybe it's my coworker and she's like getting something to drink or something. And so finally I'm like, all right, well, I can't sleep now because I hear all this shuffling. So let me, I open my eyes and I look and nobody's there. And I'm like, okay. So I get up and I go over to the, to the front doors and I look and they're locked. So she had locked up after he left. And so I go in the back, I'm like, hey, I was like, were you walking around me right now? And she looked at me and she was like, no. She's like, I thought you were swinging your feet on the chair over there. So I went to look at you and when I saw that you were asleep, I just turned around and came back to work. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, so that wasn't you? And she's like, no, I thought it was you. Needless to say, that never happened again. But that cafe, there was another, there was a few things that happened. But that was probably my, like, scariest moment in that cafe. It definitely uh, freaked me out. But it never happened again. Um, we did have something else. I think it was something else there. But it used to drop things all the time. Same cafe, but... It happened a lot more often where like you wouldn't be in an area of the cafe for like hours and then something would randomly fall out of nowhere. It happened all the time. And then one day I was by myself and I, um, I put the muffin pans in the, the dishwasher cart and I lined them up a certain way so they don't fall over. And I was like, well, I got another one, so I'll leave this out and wait to wash them so I can wash them all together. So I'm working for like, I don't know, an hour or two. And all of a sudden I hear this whack. And I knew instantly what it was when it happened. It, it was one of the muffin pans that had flipped off onto the floor. But I was confused because they were locked in for one. For two, I had not been over there for at least an hour. And it just so happened at that moment, my coworker showed up, so he rang the, the door. And so I had to walk halfway over there to unlock the uh, security pad so that I can open the door without the alarm going off. So I was like freaked out walking over there. And so he came in and I was like, oh my God, you would not believe what just happened. And so he looks and the muffin pan is like halfway across the, 
Like it's super far away from where it was lodged. So it was really confusing like how it got that big of a distance uh, from where it was. So that happened at the cafe. And then after that, nothing ever fell again. So I wonder if that was like, whatever it was, it was like its last goodbye. Like, all right, I'm out. And that was like a parting gift from it or something. I don't know. But after that, nothing ever fell. And I was there for a good year after, no, maybe a six months or so. And never again did that happen. So... I always believe, everyone always thought the cafes were haunted, but I always thought it was just, um, it's not necessarily that they were haunted. I think they were just things passing through. Some just stayed longer than others, but um, yeah, if you work by yourself somewhere all night long, every day, you definitely see some things that you can't explain. Um, there is one cafe though, for sure was haunted. That was for sure haunted. I have quite a few stories about that one, but maybe that'll be another time since, um, I'm about to run out of time here, but maybe I'll do that in my next live. I'll tell my, my stories about that cafe. I'll have to write them down so I remember them all. All the occurrences but uh, yeah otherwise I've never been anywhere that's had anything like super weird although our house in Germany had two instances um, I can say those really quick so one time I was home the girls were in bed they were sleeping it was like 11 p.m. my husband had to go to work for a quick minute and um, it was like because he's always on call over there in Germany so he had left and he had been gone for a little bit and I was in bed. It was like 11 p.m. And it's, we used to have to recycle over there. So I had all the recycling and trash bags hanging on command hooks in our laundry room, which was by the front door, which is all the way across from the, all the way across the house. And it sounded like out of nowhere that the command hook broke off the wall and the bag of cans that was full fell on the floor. And I jumped cause you know, I was by myself. It was super quiet and I, but I knew the sound. I was like, oh, okay, I know what that is. Um, I'll get it later. Next day I go and the bag of cans is still on the wall. <laughs> Like I said, my husband was not home. My dogs were in the bed with me sleeping and my girls were asleep in bed. And I was all the way across the house for like hours, a couple hours laying in bed doing reading or whatever. So it was, it definitely tripped me out. And then another time we were all in the living room and me and my husband were sitting on the couch and my oldest was playing next to us and my dogs were around me and we're like laughing and talking and then all of a sudden we see her giant um mini mouse ball we see it come from the kitchen and it's slowly rolling across the dining room oh. out of nowhere and we kind of sat there and looked at it and watched it and then it stopped rolling when it hit the dining table. And we kind of looked at each other and then we didn't see, <laughs> we just went about our business. We're like, we're not even gonna think about that. But it was really, um, that was it, thankfully. Cause apparently all those homes there, um, where we were at, the base that we were at and the housing area outside of the base that we were at in Germany was, the, what was it? The, it was the prison for the prisoners of war. So a lot of people in that housing community right outside the gate, um, they had a lot of stuff happen in their homes. But it made sense because that's when World War, what was it, World War II? That's where they kept all the prisoners. So you know there's stuff going on there. We were kind of bummed that they didn't do like, um, what do you would call it? They didn't do like tours and stuff there for like ghost, 
ghost hunting or ghost ghost tours. Um, yeah, they didn't do anything like that there. But you knew, you knew there was lots of stuff going on there because that land is so old and there's been so much that's happened on the land in Germany. So pretty, pretty crazy. But that was it for us. My neighbors, our, our best friends that were in the building next to us, they had a crazy ghost in their house. <laughs> and uh, it definitely freaked them out quite a bit. So, so they were happy to get out of there. Um, they actually moved about two weeks after we left Germany. So they weren't there much longer. But yeah, maybe I'll go into depth on that last cafe that was haunted in another live. But like I said, it probably won't be for a couple of weeks. Um, like I said, our closing date is next Wednesday. So it's all just moving stuff. Uh, that's going to be happening the next couple weeks. And then hopefully by middle of January, I should have my craft room set up and I can start back on my sewing videos and craft videos again. So we're almost there guys. Almost there. I'm so excited. I'm excited for my little craft room. So yeah, that's what's going on right now. But um, otherwise I will try and keep up once I get back to it, I will try and keep up with lives and um, videos on Wednesdays. Um, like I said, the only reason it's Tuesday today is because I have our, um, blue tape appointment tomorrow for the house at two. So it was like my stream time. Um, but otherwise I wish you guys a super Merry Christmas and I want you guys to make sure that you stay safe because... It is getting crazy out there. Crazy with this virus going on. It's just spreading like wildfire wildfire right now. And I should know because I'm from California. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so just be safe and take your precautions. It doesn't hurt. I mean, people get sick anyways during winter, so. We're doing okay so far. We're just gonna chill here at home until the house stuff. And then once we get into this new house, we're just gonna buckle down and hide out pretty much till everything starts to blow over. But uh, otherwise, yeah, hopefully the next time you see me work on this, I might have quite a bit more done with it. I think I'm gonna start getting this one out of the way so that when I get back into my videos, I can start a new canvas because I don't like to have like 50 projects going at one time. Um, so I will try and get this done as fast as I can so that, that way I can have a new one going and then I can do another review video. Um, I got like a ton from Diamond Art Club, but I think I'll change it up and do a different company do a couple different companies coming up. Um, yeah, so, all right. Well, like I said, have a Merry Christmas or whatever you celebrate and a Happy New Year. And hopefully to all of us, we have a better year next year. Um, so here's hoping. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys again soon. I'll try to put some updates on the on my channel. So just keep an eye out for that as well as on my Facebook. I'll have some, I'll try and keep my updates on there as well because I'm still kind of bad at Instagram and I'm super bad at Twitter. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, but thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.